So this is 835 High Street Armadale on Chris McHugh from Carr. Uh, the building's quite singular in its language, as you might have already seen or will see, uh, between interior and architecture forms. Uh, the site is commercial one zone and really interesting context. Uh, there's neighbourhood residential immediately to the north, very low scale, predominantly single level residential growth to the west immediately, and then a lot of C1 to the east. I guess the one of the main issues as we were massing up the feasibility for the site acquisition, we were replacing the former Jewel Lux paint shop on High Street there, and then uh, proposing as the commercial zone contemplated a six to seven storey building. There was actually no height limit across the site, but council had very different ideas on what they actually wanted to see along the site. So the Armadale Cellars uh, to the top left was a key driver for us in terms of a rhythm and streetscape. Um, High Street Armadale has traditionally been known for fine art galleries and the like, and so we wanted to make reference to the Victorian shop fronts of the streetscape, but also recognising that we were bringing a building of significantly larger scale uh, to this part of High Street, of which now there are many other buildings in, um, in development and construction. So working to the form, the council preferred five storeys. We went in with uh, seven to VCAT, lost a level through the VCAT battle. But uh, interestingly, there was no test case for how you interface with neighbourhood residential on a south uh, site. So what we ultimately determined through that VCAT battle was uh, a res code set back to the north to level three and then shear vertically. Uh, given the site's 50 metre frontage, we wanted to break down the scale and mass of it. Again, council wanted a three storey preferred streetscape wall. Um, this was my starting sketch for the project, uh, which was about breaking down the scale. Also, uh, it started from the planning principle of a two bedroom apartment, of which uh, there's predominantly two bedroom and three bedroom within the development. It started as 27 in apartments and then was later actually through the horror of COVID uh, the penthouse was combined into one big granddaddy one uh, at about 600 square metres. So the, the rhythm of the colonnade of the street front was in, in reference to the shop fronts but it was also guided by a 3.2 metre grid. Each of the columns uh, vertically is trying to then express itself in the horizontal format of slab expression and Garden Arbor as a 300 by 300 mil profile. So these, again, some early sketch tests on uh, what the building might be, I think arriving at a point that, um, again, it was purely singular in its language, working on that rhythm of facade modulation as it presents to High Street. So integrating the landscape was a key driver for us. Prospect to view was always part of our internal planning, but certainly uh, shielding from High Street particularly because there's a zero lot boundary setback onto high and, and traffic and uh, 24 hours a day virtually. So we've, we've worked within uh, the frame and then also provided inset balconies with a planted detail. We worked with Acre Landscape Studio and it's now, we used Rory on the photography which we shot in September and, and now it's starting to really come to life with the landscape taking up over the, the planted form. So. The idea of working with fine art within the precinct, we also reached out to Anna Willie Highfield to create a piece of sculpture for the building. The original sketch proposed a bird to the top right hand corner, which is actually made by Anna Willie Highfield. And we we're all very excited about it until wind tunnel testing wouldn't give us a warranty for 10 years of the life of the structure. So that uh, evolved into a sculpture of 15 mixed media, but pre predominantly brass birds within the lobby space rising over the four height, uh, four storey height lobby. So at Brown Plain, there's a larger retail space to the left, which is um, the Leaf Store Organic Grocer, and to the right is Loon Croissants, and it's quite a small uh, lobby space on arrival, small in footprint, but then uh, larger volume. So the stacking of the, the core was really around the trying to get scale of mix, so southern two bedroom apartments around which most of the, the project started its life at about 82 square metres and then much larger product on the north. And as we step up through, uh, they start to cascade away from the north. So this is the, the general planning principle. So you can see that repeating rhythm and, and grid of the facade that then informs the logic for the entire building, which is consistent around the entirety of the plan. Uh, so as we step through each of the levels, so some of the apartments to the west there uh, triple aspect and then uh, the subfloor penthouses as half floor 
single floor penthouse, which then later claimed uh, the, the roof space as its own amenity space. So this was something that was contemplated as amenity for the building, but uh, again, in COVID, there was nervousness around cost of construction, cost of operation, body corporate costs. Uh, so that was flipped into the sole rooftop amenity of the penthouse, which uh, sold in scary COVID times at, at pretty well record for the, the precinct. Uh, so this is then Rory's photograph of the building upon completion. So you can start to see that scale of four storeys versus what is predominantly a three-storey character. We had tested a three-storey form, uh, but given the feasibility, the aspirations of NSA and GFA across the site, uh, it effectively needed to be a four-storey form, and we felt architecturally that it, it could hold its own in terms of the rhythm above that ground floor streetscape setback. Because of acoustics, so there's fixed windows, uh, they're thermally broken double glazed frames to each of the south facing bedrooms and then the aperture onto the, the balcony is achieved by a side return. It's the central break within the form. And some detailed photographs. So the interior spaces uh, are really simple, monochromatic, as is the architecture of its rendered form. And you start to see here the dancing form of Annawelly Highfields swallows across the four storeys and the shadows they cast throughout the, the day and evening being really sort of south facing space are quite lovely. The repeating rhythm of the 300 profile starts to make its way into the interiors by expressing the architecture into the interior space and that informs then all detail of interior joinery and architecture as well.